All right, so in this uh, video, we're going to take a look at sampling distributions. Um, this is one of the tougher concepts in the course, and a thorough understanding of it isn't absolutely necessary, but, you know, there's some students who do want that. Um, so we're going to focus more on the overview, uh, the big picture, and, and how to get actual calculations of this. And then I think that the deeper understanding will hopefully follow from that. Um, the book does a great job with sampling distributions for the mean, and there's going to be a lot more stuff on that, so we'll start with that. Um, but not so much with sampling distributions for the proportion. And so it, it almost glosses over this, and then we get to confidence intervals and hypothesis testing, and it, it does just as much with proportion as with the mean, and um, that theory isn't really covered. So we'll try to kind of fill in the gaps for that. Um, so we want to know what a sampling distribution is for one of these parameters. Um, when is that distribution normal? So we can use what we know about finding probabilities from normal distributions. Um, how is it related to previous problems? Because we've actually covered just a regular mean or proportion probability problem already. Um, and then how do you calculate the probabilities? So let's do it first for uh, sampling distribution for the mean. So you got to think of there being a population, and then you take a sample from it, and that is going to give you a single number, right? A sample mean. Now we want to imagine doing that for many, many, many samples and create a new population from all those sample means. Let's uh, let's look at a simulation here. This website's pretty good. So we'll do a sampling distribution for the mean. Right. And so off on the right, you can see what the original population was. And now we're going to take a sample of size 10. Right. So let's take a sample. Right. And so it, it uses random sampling to pick a sample of 10 individuals from this population. Um, there's those 10 individuals. They all came from that population. Uh, and then, of course, it can find the sample mean. So it turns those... 10 values into one number. All right, that one sample mean is now an individual in the sampling distribution. So that's the idea, right? We, we take a sample from a population, we get a sample mean, that becomes an individual in the sampling distribution. So the distribution, sampling distribution is now going to be all the sample means. So there's another one. All right, there's a different sample from the same population, and you get a different sample mean. So now we have two individuals in our sampling distribution. All right. Now we want to take a bunch of these. So it would take a while to just do this one at a time and see the pattern. So what we want to do is maybe get 10 at a time, or 100 at a time, or 1,000 at a time. Now what happened? We now see that we have a distribution. Right? Each one of these dots in the big dot plot is a sample mean of a sample taken from this population. Now, if you think of every possible sample going in here, right, then you get the full sampling distribution. Now, what's the connection between these? Well, uh, you see that this is normal looking, right? And in addition, you see that the mean of this population is very close to the mean of the original population, right? And so the statistical theory will say that those are the same. As the sampling distribution gets to be bigger and bigger, let's look at another thousand. Now we're really close, right? 43.072, 43.024. So as you approach taking every possible sample and putting their sample means here, um, the average of those, the mean of the means, um, is going to be the population mean. Uh, and notice that the original population was not normal, right? Okay, um, the other thing is that there's a connection between the standard deviation of this sampling distribution and the standard deviation of the original population. It's obviously less. Standard deviation of this sampling distribution is about 9, and the standard deviation of the original population is about 30. Um, the connection is that it should be off by a factor of square root of the sample size. Now, our sample size was 10, but if you were to say it was 9, and square root of that is 3, and it's actually pretty close, right? Um, it's it's almost three times as 
uh, big here. So 30 compared to 9. So you can kind of validate that. It doesn't prove it, but, but that's what the statistical theory says. Okay. So I recommend people kind of mess with this and get an idea of what a sampling distribution is and how we get one from a population. Um, so here's a summary of the, what we learned is that the mean of the sampling distribution is equal to the mean of the original population. Those are the same. And the standard deviation of the sampling distribution is off by square root of the factor of the square root of the sample size. So uh, those are the formulas used to adjust from the population to the sampling distribution. All right. Now, I showed that it was normal here, but uh, there are some stricter requirements that to, we can say to do this in general. Uh, we actually either need the original population to be normal or the sample size to be 30 or more. Um, now, this one happened to go pretty normal with a sample size of 10, but in general, the theory that we're using only holds if the sample size is 30 or greater. Um, and the original population could also be normal. So it's one or the other. You could have both. Um, so in other words, if we, the original population is normal, you can have really small samples, no problem. But if it's not, you need the big samples, at least 30. So those are your requirements. And, and you, want, you want this to be normal because then you can use the norm dist function to calculate stuff. Okay, so how is this related to previous problems? Uh, well, we first learned about a normal distribution. I might say, uh, what is the probability that a randomly selected individual is shorter than 4 feet? Right? So uh, the heights of individuals is normally distributed. This is just taking the individual from a population. But with the sampling distribution, look at the difference. What is the probability that a random sample of 30 individuals has an average height of less than 4 feet? So look at the difference between those two problems. In the first one, you're just selecting an individual. In the second one, you're selecting a sample. And so the sample is almost treated as an individual in the sampling distribution. All right, so that's the language you want to be looking for. It says, what is the probability that a sample has some property? That's sampling distribution. If it just says, what is the probability that an individual has a certain characteristic? You can use the regular population rules. So how are the probabilities different? So We're going to have to use an example here, and we need a mean. Um, in this case, mean is 5.5 feet. We know the sampling distribution has the exact same mean as the population, so that's fine. Uh, and then uh, standard deviation is 1 for the population. Um, now, when you do a sampling distribution, you have a sample size associated with it. And so you have to kind of state that somewhere. Um, in this problem, we're looking at a sample of 30 individuals. So sample size is 30, right? And the sampling distribution has a smaller standard deviation. So you divide by the square root of that sample size. So here I would divide by the square root of 30. Right? So much smaller standard deviation. Right? And then you can find probabilities for that. So what is the probability that an individual is less than 4? So we use the norm dist command, right? And you're looking for the probability of it being less than 4. And so we'd use the mean standard deviation here. And then you need to put in a 1 at the end. So uh, there is a 7% chance about, right? 6.7% 6, 6 chance that we would randomly select somebody shorter than 4 feet from the population. But what are the chances that we randomly select 30 people and the average height of those 30 people is less than 4 feet? Right? So a different problem, but the difference is subtle. Uh, again, we since the sampling distribution is normal because the sample size is 30, we can still we can still use the norm dist thing. So that's the whole point here is we want to use this norm dist 
Um, so we need to make sure the sampling distribution is normal. And uh, sometimes the population isn't normal, so you can't necessarily use the, the norm dist on the population. Okay, so we use 4 again here, and then the mean, and then the standard deviation. Right? Um, and of course, I put the full formula here. Uh, that is what we're using is 1 divided by square root of 30. Right? And this is a very small number, right? so very, very small chance that this would happen. Uh, because then you need most of those people to be less than four feet tall, right? So one person, sure, seven percent chance, but thirty people less than four feet tall, um, not likely, right? Um, because as you get a big sample that you randomly select, it's going to be more likely representative of the population. So it's not going to have an average of five point five feet, but it should be closer to five point five feet. All right. So that kind of covers how we do sampling distributions for the mean. What about for proportion? Uh, so the idea is very similar. All right. So um, with the proportion, you have a population that has a certain percentage with a certain characteristic. So, and this one we're looking at proportion. Um, for the population is 0 0.275. So about 27.5% of the people in the population have some characteristic. Um, and I'm going to now take a sample. So you don't see the individuals in the sample because it's a lot more boring for data, right? It's just a bunch of yeses and nos, uh, or ones and zeros with this binomial data, right? Because there's only two possible choices. Um, but I have it to 10 people, and then out of those, one person has this characteristic. Um, we're actually looking at college graduates. So um, the population might be everybody in the country, and we have 27.5% of the country has a college degree. Now I randomly sample 10 people from the country and one of them has a college degree. Okay, so that means 10%. All right, let me do another randomly pick 10 more people. All right, this time I picked 10 people, two of them had a college degree, so it was 20%. Right, so it's gonna be a little different each time because I'm picking different people, and it could be none of them, it could be all of them, but it's more likely that it'll be somewhere near this but not necessarily equal, right? That's the big thing is it's likely that it'll be close to the population because we're randomly selecting, um, but it doesn't have to be. You know, I could, I could actually get all 10 of them have a college degree. Um, so you start to get this same pattern of happening over and over where you want to skip ahead, do 10 at once, let's do 100 at once, now let's do 1,000 at once. Okay, so we now get the sampling distribution here, and there's so many dots that just look like bars, um, but because we're only picking 10 people, um, the results have to be one of these values. So it is sort of a discrete distribution. Um, but it's normal, right? So to get this normal distribution, and what is the mean of this distribution? says the mean of this distribution is 0.277. Ah, very close to the population proportion. So again, the population mean of the sampling distribution matches with the parameter of the original population. In this case, it's a proportion. So that's not that surprising. Um, there's also a connection between the standard deviation here and the standard deviation there. Um, and we can show that that's very similar to what we had before. It's, again, it's off by the square root of n. So let's go back to this and see our formulas. The mean of the uh, sampling distribution is the population proportion. And the standard deviation of the sampling distribution is the square root of PQ over N. Uh, where you could think of the standard deviation of the original population was just square root of PQN. And so it is just, just dividing by square root of N. Uh, how do I know this is going to be normal? Okay, so there's different requirements here. Um, if the original population had a population proportion of 0.5, then it would be basically normal. 
so you wouldn't have to worry about it. Uh, or if you have the right size variance. So you need to have the sample size be, there's no like magic number like 30 anymore. It really depends on what the population proportion is. Um, so for instance, the one we just did had uh, population um, proportion was 0.275 and Q, Q is just 1 minus P. So the N we had was 10 and you want to just multiply these. Ooh. So see that variance is not big enough. So we basically needed a bigger sample size. Um, so what if we did 30? Still not. So maybe it needs to be up by like 50. OK, then we're getting close. So uh, 55 or so should do it, 56, 60. Um, let's just do 60. Now we have that number bigger than 10, so it will be normal. So if we kind of go back to this example, uh, you might have been saying, uh, Mr. Watts, that's not actually normal. It's kind of skewed right. That's true, right? That's a shrewd observation and um, probably because we didn't have this big enough. What if it was 60? Now let's generate this. All right, is that more to your liking? Does that look more normal? Um, so we have that bigger sample size that allows this to be normal because this original one is definitely not normal, right? And our goal is to get the sampling distribution to be normal. So we can use norm dist to calculate probabilities. OK, um, you also need the sample size to be smaller than the overall population. Um, so that just means much less than. Um, and that really depends on the problem. So if you're doing stuff like where it's the population of everybody in the country, you typically don't have to worry about that. Um, but if you have a small population, then that is something to keep in mind. Now we have done problems similar to this, the binomial problems, right? So here's a typical binomial problem you might have done. What is the probability that a random sample of 12 people will have at least two that have a dog? All right, now it's very similar the way you'll get a sampling distribution problem for this. Um, what is the probability that in a random sample of 100 individuals, 25% or more will have a dog? Right, so they both have this binomial thing. Like when I interview these people, the answer, do you have a dog, is going to be yes or no. And I'm still looking at how many out of the total will have it. Um, so, you know, the, the difference is a lot more subtle here. Um, but there will be words that will kind of trigger to tell you to use a sampling distribution. And, and a lot of the problems will just straight up have the word sampling distribution in them to let you know sampling distribution. Um, but, uh, you know, here we have the binomial distribution. And here we have the normal distribution. So how will this actually work? Um, let's take a look at the same example, but have a specific number. We'll say that the 20% of people have a dog. All right, and I want to get a random sample of 100 people. And what is the probability that um, x is, what is it? I guess it'd be yeah, x is less than 3. So we could use binome dist for this. And the number of successes would be 3. And oh, we actually had the uh, sample size just be 12 for this first one. So 12. And probability of success is 0 0.2. So that's for. So if I randomly sample 12 people, 80% um, chance that 3 or less will have a dog. Now what about the sampling distribution? So I'm going to have these be the same. Um, this time I'm going to have a sample size of 100. All right, and how do I calculate this? So with the sampling distribution, since I have my sample size big enough, it's actually going to be a normal distribution. and uh, we want to know the probability that 25% um, or less will have a dog in this sample. 
So we use norm dist and we put in 0.25 because we want to know 25% or less. And then the mean of the sampling distribution is the same as the population proportion. And the standard deviation of the sampling distribution is given by that formula. It's the square root of P times Q divided by N. So these numbers are pretty close, um, and they should be because 3 out of 12 is 25%, right? Um, but they're off because the sample sizes are different, and of course, one is dealing with the sampling distribution and one is with the population. So uh, hopefully this kind of clears up any questions that you might have about sampling distributions and how we calculate them.